scripture reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will, be ho- I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Good morning, everyone. I appreciate uh, everybody coming out this morning. Um, I look forward to sharing with you the lesson that I've been working on for a while now, uh, titled Fear Not, For I Am With You. Um, You know, I have an opportunity to preach maybe once or twice a year, and there's always just enough space in between that I get a little bit of nerves getting up here. Um, And so as I'm walking up, I'm thinking, fear not, for I am with you. And I I think that's appropriate for our lesson this morning. Um, You know, I think as uh, many of the men have touched on recently in different lessons and invitations, uh, we live in trying times. Um, And it certainly can be a scary world. The news is scary. Um, I don't know if things are getting worse or if the media just makes it seem that way because we have more access and more awareness of what's going on. But I would say spiritually uh, speaking at least, it seems that maybe we're not trending in the right direction. And so this is a topic that's been on my mind for a little bit here. And uh, my goal this morning is hopefully to offer you some encouragement, more importantly, to offer glory to God as we look at this topic and as we go through the lesson together. I do want to thank everyone, too, uh, for the encouragement that I get every time that I get up here. That, that certainly makes it easier. Um, I want to thank the elders for this opportunity to preach. You know, it wasn't that long ago um, I preached a lesson on chat GPT, so they're obviously pretty good sports here um, to let us get up here and, and give us uh, you know, a wide berth as uh, we, we present uh, these lessons. So uh, when we think about you know, fear not, actually one of the things that I had uh, initially heard, um, and I don't remember if I was listening to the radio or um, where I saw it, but uh, the point was made that in scripture, this idea of fear nots mentioned hundreds of times. And so I thought, if, if that's the case, then this seems like a worthy topic to explore. You know, if, if we're told this many times not to fear, well, that seems like a theme that, that maybe we should pay attention to. And so that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel this back a few different ways for us to consider. Uh, we'll try to make some application from it as well as we go. By the way, I did not count this myself in scripture. I did use ChatGPT for that. Uh, you're welcome to go back and check my work. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll look at this again from a few different vantage points. And I wanna first start with, you know, let's not fear living, right? I, I don't think that God's intention in putting us on this earth is for us to live and exist in fear. And, and I'll support that with some scripture. In John 15, Jesus tells us, let my joy be in you and let that joy be made full. And so Jesus wants joy for us. And just consider even, you know, going back in time even a little bit further, just consider the magnificence of, of creation and, and all the time that, that God took to perfect the, the creation and everything that, that he gave to man. He gives us domain over that creation. Everything that he created was for us and, and to support us in this life here. And and by the way, God made us special. He created us different than anything else that he made in creation. He gave us attributes that that nothing else shares but us because he made us in his image. And he did that because he loves us and he wants the best for us. And and let's also just consider his plans for us. We can read in John 10.10, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Clearly, I think there's a spiritual connection to that statement as well, but certainly there's an aspect that applies to life. And and so I make these points again to say, I think God wants us to be free from fear to live our life in accordance with his will. And yet that's not always easy for us to do. And so what are some of those things that might hold us back from time to time and some things that, that we might fear? This is certainly 
not an all-inclusive list. Um, I think when we explore the, the range of topics of things we may fear, it could be hundreds of things, could be thousands of things. Th these are some categories that, that seem to be reoccurring in scripture, and so I thought this would be a good place for us to start. Um, you know, we, we can think about bullies, you know, people in our life that exist seemingly to make our life difficult, right? Maybe that's, you know, physical bullies, maybe it's mental, maybe these are just extremely negative people, unfortunately, that, that we interact with in, in life, but, but maybe, maybe it's a cause of concern for us. Um, politics, I was hesitant to put that one on the list. If we weren't in an election year, I probably wouldn't, but it's hard to miss the fact that, that we're in election season here. And I just wanna make a, a simple point on that too. I think we need to be careful sometimes when it comes to politics. And I don't care if you support the red team or the blue team, but I think it's important that we acknowledge our, our, our Lord and our Savior and our faith above anything else. Amen. And post-November, when this election's over, let's all know that our king will remain on the throne now and forever. And so that, that's important here. We, we worry about health, um, sometimes our own health, maybe the health of, of others, health of, of loved ones. Uh, financial and other needs, you know, I, I think that's a big one in life in general. Um, you know, in our lives, in our marriages, <clears throat> you know, and, and scripture certainly talks about, um, you know, this, this topic quite a bit. You know, we think about, um, you know, the, the other needs, just the, the daily things that, that we worry about, right? And there's a lot of scripture. We'll look at a couple examples in, in just a minute here, but, you know, I, I sometimes can't help but think, you know, what, when we think about all that God's given us and, and maybe we underestimate the impact of that creation that, that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, everything that we have today is a result of, of God's provision for us and everything that he has put into creation. I think sometimes we have the notion that God gave us dirt and, and water and, and man came up with the rest. That's not true. There's not a single thing that you can point to in this life that you can't trace back to the things that, that God has equipped us with in this world. I was even thinking about my, my iPhone. You know, you, do you know if, if you, and you can Google this, I, I'm not, I don't have a slide for it. If you Google what are all the, the base components that go into creating a phone, there are so many natural elements of most of them, I have no idea what they are. But all the ingredients that go into forming something like a state-of-the-art technology, that's all from God. So maybe it's taken man a while actually to catch up with all that God has provisioned us with and, and given us to work with, but there is not a single thing that you can point to that is not directly handed down to us from, from God. We should, we should not underestimate that. We may have fear of failure in our life. We may have fear of safety. Um, we may fear sharing our faith as we're asked to do as Christians. And then I left one blank here. Maybe there's a particular fear that's holding you back. There's a fear that, that you, you, know, you worry about and you think about. You, know, you, you can write that down. Um, you can fill in the blank there because I think the solutions to all these fears, we're gonna see it's the same prescription. You can fill that blank in with whatever you want. It's the same prescription for us to be able to deal with these, these fears. And you know, as we look at this list, and this is a brief list, are these new fears? Are these new things that, that we have to deal with? When you just look at this list, can you think about some different scriptures and some different stories that we have in scriptures that, that maybe go straight to some of these different categories? I, I came up with a few just for us to take a look at here. You know, we think about bullies. How about, how about David and Goliath? You know, what, what if David wouldn't have stood up to Goliath? Goliath had to be the ultimate bully, right? Nobody wanted to fight or go up against Goliath and, and you know, and, and thank God that, that David did. It would be hard to imagine what our Bibles would be like without the story of David starting with Goliath here. Um, we think about politics. Maybe you don't think about politics much in, in scripture, but think about, you know, Jesus and all of his disciples as they were marching towards Jerusalem and Jesus was performing all these miracles. And, and the people that were following Jesus didn't even understand what was happening or what might happen but certainly it would have been a pretty scary time when they realized Jesus had been put to death. And so that would have been a scary time 
politically, maybe for his disciples following his death. We think about health. How about Job? How about everything, all the trials that, that Job went through here? Did, did he let his decaying health and things that he couldn't even understand, did he let that interrupt his faith? He didn't. We think about, you know, again, financial um, considerations here, and, and we read in Matthew 6, lay up treasures in heaven. And I talked about some of those other needs as well. This is, this is good scripture in Matthew 6 to help us understand that, that God's going to provide for us. We don't necessarily have to worry about all these things the, the way that we do, what, we, what we'll eat, what we'll wear, um, and, and things of that nature. And I like this um, example that's given in scripture about the birds. Think about the birds. They don't have barns to store up in. They don't reap, they don't sow. I'm glad I'm not a bird. They wake up every day and they start from scratch, right? And yet, even last night, the birds were getting rained on, and this morning, the birds were chirping. The birds seem to do okay. They seem pretty happy. The birds seem happier than some humans I know. <laughs> and, and there's a lesson for us in that. There, there is clearly a lesson in, in that if God is going to provide for the birds, how much more is he going to provide and, and care for us, right? And, and that, is, that is a message here. Um, how about a fear of failure? You know, Moses, when, when God asked Moses to lead the Israelites and to be a spokesperson, did Moses want to do that? He did not want to do that. He tried to, you know, he, he, he tried to negotiate that with God a little bit, and ultimately he did uh, bring in Aaron to help him out on that, but, but he, was, he, he had a fear of failure here. Um, safety, you know, fear of safety. I thought about the disciples and the storm and the boat with Jesus, you know, and, and maybe their lack of, of faith you know, for their mission that, that they were on. Um, and, and, you know, Jesus calmed the waters, calmed the seas, calmed the, calmed the wind and, and the waters here. Um, or how about Paul? We, we have countless stories of, of Paul. Randy, you know, brought up Paul in, in our Wednesday night study. Paul beaten, stoned, thrown out of a city. And, and most people say, well, I've had enough. I mean, I've got enough sense to know I need to get out of here. And, and Paul dusts himself off and he, and he goes right back to work. Right? Or how about sharing our faith? Maybe that makes us nervous. Right? I'd rather I'm a little bit more comfortable if I can just keep my Christianity to myself. Right? But, but that's not what we see in the Great Commission. It, and, and we're told to go out to all nations um, and, and make believers, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and, and the Holy Ghost. We're, we're, we're commanded to do that. You know, but I think about the story of Jonah. Right? God, God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh. And, and spread the word in Nineveh, and Jonah, did, he didn't want to go to Nineveh, did he? It, and what happened to Jonah? He got swallowed up by a whale. So if we don't want to go around and spread our faith, we better not be getting in the ocean either. <laughs> you know, and, and so again, these are not new fears that, that I think that, that we're encountering here, but, but what is the prescription to these fears? How, how can we deal with these things? We look at the verse in, in Psalms here, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? If we have the Lord, we have everything. And, and we have everything we need, and we have nothing to fear. Some more verses here. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. That was out of Matthew 6, where we just had some discussion. Not only should we not worry about today or tomorrow, we shouldn't worry about anything here in Philippians chapter 4. Don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts so that we may boldly say the lord is my helper i will not fear what can man do to me who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good but even if you should suffer for righteousness you are blessed do not fear them or be intimidated for it is better to suffer for doing good if it if that should be god's will than for doing evil and, and so the, the strength and the power that we draw from is not of ourselves, but, but it's having the Lord with us 
every step of the way here. And I like this last verse that we just looked, looked at. Even if trouble should come our way, it doesn't compare to the trouble we'll find if we're not following what God would have us to do here. So even if we do fall into trouble, still better that we did the right thing here. So as we move forward here, you know, the, the, next, the next item to maybe consider, this one's maybe a little bit harder, do not fear dying. This, this could have been on the last list, by the way, right? Maybe it's the fear of death that's preventing us from living. But, but this is one that I think we can look at, too. And when we picture, you know, fearlessness and, and courageousness, I just wonder what comes to mind sometimes. You know, I was listening to a song, and, and the lyrics of the song were, I'm not afraid to die, right? And it was a bold statement. But I don't think that was a statement made out of faith. I, I think that's a, you know, a, a statement made out of, you know, being carefree. And, and let's not confuse carelessness for courageousness. Right? And, and so who do we think of or what do we think of when, when we think about fearlessness and we think about courage? And, and we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, but as we think about you know, death here and, and some different considerations that may give us fear, it's, it's not only in our more own mortality here. I think there's some other ways that maybe we could think about that. Who's going to care for my loved ones when I'm gone? That, that can be a fear we may have of death. And I can tell you as a father, that, that's one that I think about and, and I pray about. You know, I want to have strength for my family. I want to be able to protect my family. I want to care for them. I want to provide for them. Those things are important to me. And I do pray for those things. But I also have to pray to God and thank him because he's actually the one that's making that all happen. Amen. Right? And, and I think that's that's kind of the takeaway here. Look at a couple scriptures. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. He did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Sometimes we need to turn it over to the Lord. Maybe we put a little bit too much on ourselves for what we think we're doing and responsible for. It's really the Lord's protection that, that we want and, and that he will continue to provide. Another way that, that we might fear death would be, you know, with respect to our own legacy. How will we be remembered? What will we leave behind? I don't want to be a downer this morning, but I heard somebody mention this too, and it kind of caught my attention. You know, in a hundred years, nobody's going to remember us. None of us are going to be here in 100 years. And the people that are here, they won't know us or have known us. You think about the car you're driving 100 years from now, it's, it's probably going to be in a scrap heap somewhere. You think about the house that you're living in. If it's still standing, it will have other people living in it. You think about this church building. As we're adding to it, there's a part of this building that hasn't even been built yet. 100 years from now, it's going to be old. This will be even the older part of the building if it's still here, and I hope it will be, and I hope it will be packed with new Christians. But we're just here for a short while. I think that's a hard concept for us to grasp. James tells us that. He tells us our lives are like a vapor, but this life is all we know, so it doesn't always feel like a vapor. But when you step out aside that and you realize, you know, we're just here for a little bit. This is our time. We have our family. We have our friends. We have our church. We have each other. This is our little bit of time. 100 years from now, it's going to be somebody else's little bit of time here. And, and so we probably shouldn't worry too much about what, what our legacy might be here. Um, but there are a couple things, I think, that from a legacy standpoint are OK. We will not hide them from our children, but we will tell future generations and praise the, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his might and his wondrous works as he has performed. One generation will declare your works to the next and will proclaim your mighty acts. So we think about a legacy, that's a good legacy, right? Let, let's leave a legacy of faith for our children, for our children's children, for their, their children, and, and for this church, for future generations of Christians. I think that's worthy. Well, one more um, in fearing death, the finality 
of reaching the end. Th this is the one that, that probably scares people the most, the, the end of life, the end of everything, except we know that the end of life isn't the end of everything, is it? Now, some people have convinced themselves of this. Some people have convinced themselves that, that God doesn't exist. I personally think that takes work. I think you have to really be willing to deny the obvious to reach that conclusion. But I think uh, Ronald Reagan actually said it best. He told a story at a national prayer breakfast. This was a long time ago, but you can search it up. And he said, you know, I'll never be able to relate to the atheist mindset, especially when we're surrounded by so much beauty. He said, but I've always had a desire to invite a group of atheists to the White House. And I would serve them the most fabulous gourmet meal that they've ever experienced. And when it's all done, I'll ask them, do you think there was a chef? I, I thought it was good. Anyway. Um, <laughs> he got a big laugh when he told the story. So, no, but we know better. We, we know that life isn't the end, right? And, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? When this corruptible body is clothed with incorruptibility, and this mortal body is clothed with immortality, then the saying that is written will take place. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where death is your victory, where death is your sting. The, the reality is we pass into the afterlife when we leave this world. It's not the end of everything. It's the start of the beginning of eternity. It, and so that, that is something that, that we, can, we can draw from. So we've talked about not fearing in life. We've talked about not fearing death. And, and so then naturally, should we fear anything? I think the answer to that is, is probably pretty clear. There's at least a couple things that I think absolutely we should fear. Um, the first would be not knowing the Lord. You know, I, I think life is difficult. Life is challenging. And I've said many times before, I think one of the greatest blessings that God has given us is, is that he gives us each other. We don't have to go through this alone. We have one another. We have our Lord and Savior. We have instruction from God. But not knowing the Lord would, would certainly, I believe, make this, this life much more challenging. In fact, the, the reoccurring theme we've seen in all these verses that we've already been looking at over and over and over is faith and strength through the Lord and, and, and having him with us to overcome those things. And so not having that, of course, is going to be a much more difficult path. Um, and from our scripture reading here, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. Again, it's his strength. It's not our own strength. It's strength that we can draw from him that, that will help us through these life's challenges. And not having that would, would be sad and, and would be much more difficult than, than going through it with him. And, and at least one more here that we should fear, standing before the Lord unprepared. That's more than fear. That, that should be terrifying. And, and we should definitely take Solomon's advice here. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. And he summed up his entire life's experience with fear, fear God and keep his commandments. That's probably pretty good advice here. And just to look at a few more scriptures, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And why is that? Because the wages of sin is death. And if we stopped right there, that would be pretty disheartening, wouldn't it? That would definitely be scary. But we don't stop there. We have the, the rest of this verse. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And, and so this, this isn't a sad negative story here. This is where we can be encouraged. And, and by the way, if, if you haven't taken these steps, that there's no time like the present to do that. If, if you can hear these words that I'm speaking and read these scriptures that we're studying, 
it is not too late for you. And so let's make some application here. Um, looking at, at, again, just you know, some of those uh, different topics and, and what does this mean for us? Well, number one, sometimes we are gonna fear. You're gonna say, wait a minute, after all that, and you're gonna come back and say, yes, we're gonna fear? Well, of course we're gonna fear. You know, we have fear in us. Who do you think put the fear in us? God put fear in us, right? It is part of who we are. And, and I think there's some reasons for that. It's, it's a powerful emotion that God gave us, um, one, it can help keep us out of trouble. There, there's a part of fear that, that is probably good for us to have some sensibility to recognize danger, right? And, and so it's not that we're never going to have fear, um, but, but I think we don't have to live there. We don't have to reside there permanently, right? And, and more importantly, what it does, it makes us rely on the Lord. And, and I think that's important. I think that's a good thing. The question is, are we taking advantage of that? Do we turn to God when we face challenges? Is that our, is that our impulse, right? Um, or do we try to work through life's challenges and after the fact, I should have prayed about that. I should have asked God for help on that. You know, we, we, need, to, uh, we need to seek the Lord here. By the way, by far the number one thing that follows all of these fear not passages, because I am with you and because I am your God. That's why. That's why we don't have to fear. So to look at a scripture here, uh, this is one that, that you know, we all know and recognize these all are. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I don't know if the, the valley of shadow, you know, valley of shadow of death, I, I don't know if that was an actual place in biblical times. It sounds scary even now. It sounds scary. It's probably not the path you take if you're heading to the spa. But this was a scary place, right? And I think more importantly, we can apply this figuratively to any challenge that, that we may face in life. Because the point is, it's not a scary place because we can rely on God as our protector. And, and that's the point. Application number two, we should take refuge in the Lord. We should do that. We should do it because he's worthy. We should do it because he loves us and he provides for us. As we've talked about, it's his strength that makes us strong. It's his protection that gives us peace. We can trust in his promises and he wants a relationship with all of us. And, and you don't have to take my word for it. Let's just look at a few scriptures here. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Just look at these passages and how nicely they fit together. The Lord's faithful. He'll strengthen us. He'll protect us. He is good. He is a stronghold. He knows us. He will help us. He will deliver us. He will save us because we trust in him. And by the way, this is, a, this is a mix of scripture from New and Old Testament. Most of my slides that have had scripture are a combination of Old and New Testament. You know why? Because God doesn't change. He's always been this way. And that's why this flows so seamless, because that is the character of God, and, and that is the God that, that we love and worship and serve. And so, um, Another one to look at here, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I, I like this verse so much, and, and there's so much that you can look at in, in this verse, but I really just want to focus on the last part. He doesn't want any to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. That's me and you, and that's everybody else. That's anybody else that we can think of. Again, if you're hearing these words and you haven't done this, it is not too late. And that, that is an important thing to consider here. God wants everyone. Number three, we have to acknowledge that we need his help. You know, because another thing he does, he, he created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He loves us. He calls to us. But he doesn't force us, does he? He gives us free will, and he gives us the ability to choose. He wants us to choose him. 
but he doesn't require it. He doesn't force it. He's going to let us make our own choices. Now, we're going to live by those choices that, that we're going to make one way or another. And, and that's the point, though. He, he, would, he would like for us to seek him out. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Because I am the door. And if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one that we're looking for to have that reconciliation with God and to have that relationship that, that we're looking for. And that also means it's going to require some honesty, some humility, some courage on our part. Well, how is that? We're going to have to admit that we need help. We're going to have to admit that we're flawed and we've messed up a lot and we need his help and we need his mercy and we need his forgiveness. We're going to have to admit this to other people that, that, that we believe that this is the only way and, and that we are willing to rely and believe and trust in the Lord. And, and this might require that we look in the mirror a little bit from time to time. And consider, have we started this journey? And if we have started this journey, have we made a mess of things? Do we need to start over again? We have a merciful God. You know, let us do that. But again, we need to, we need to take him up on that. And, and this is the most important thing I'm going to say all morning. Do not leave this world and stand before the Lord with nothing but your pride. Don't do that. There's no reason to do that. There is nothing that could be more obvious in this world than understanding how much we need our Lord and the fact that we will pass from this life one day. We will stand before God. And we don't want to be doing that on our own without Jesus there as our intercessor defending us. Don't do that. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't waste another minute in doing that. And, and this is the last thing. We'll wrap up here. As I read this, I want you to ask, I, I want to ask and I want you to, to think about this yourself. Does this apply to you? Does this apply? Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Does that apply to you? Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. Does that apply to you? I hope it does. It can. It's available. It's there. I hope that this has been helpful this morning. I hope that it has been encouraging to you. I hope that it does make us want to be better because God deserves better. He deserves our best. And he offers so much. He gives us so much. And we should take him up on that offer. If there's anything that we can do to help you this morning, I hope you'll come forward right now as we stand and as we sing.